Since then, you've been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Y'all, that is why I'm purposefully homeless. <laughs> What's up y'all? I'm Rachel Elizabeth and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things because it's the real vulnerable, honest things that actually build deeper relationship and get us to deeper intimacy with God when we're honest with him. <laughs> so y'all, I opened up this video with Colossians chapter three, verses one through three, because God finally <laughs> revealed to me so clearly what he's doing through this purposefully homeless mission, journey, whatever you want to call it. And yeah, he's using my life, but he's speaking to you. He's speaking to anyone who will listen. I have been asking God for clarity as to why I'm on this journey for the last eight plus months. And I actually did a six month update video where I shared with you that I had to completely surrender to the idea of knowing why and simply trust that God had purpose even if I couldn't see it and I know a lot of you are going through things where you're in a similar position you don't know why you have to go through whatever it is you're going through but God's asking you to trust him because he is zoomed out he sees things differently than we do we have such limited perspective y'all so trusting God is the key when we can't see the purpose and we learn how to trust God by spending time in his word and learning his character. And then over time, getting to see that his character has been faithful. Yesterday, meaning all of the history of God's faithfulness is written and recorded in the Bible for us. Also, we have over time a history of his faithfulness in our lives, but also today and tomorrow, knowing that he is unchanging. He will never change. He will always stay the same. And if he was faithful yesterday, he will be faithful today. He will be faithful tomorrow. I wanna to share something with you guys before I share the clarity God gave me about this purposely homeless journey to the point of his faithfulness. About seven years ago, I lived in Seattle and I was making six figures as an entrepreneur in the fitness industry. Many of you know this already. When God encountered me and moved me to LA, also other stories shared in different videos, he began to strip me of everything that I put my security in that was not him. One of those things, one of the main things was financial security. <laughs> Y'all, how many of you know how deeply tied our hearts are to our finances. We trust our money as God, even though our money says in God we trust. So God's gonna take us through some things that are gonna test our faith so that he can be the center so that he can be the God of our hearts. Not because he's cruel, but because he's loving you. Because that thing that he's removing is hurting you or will eventually, or it's hurting somebody else. Y'all, our money is just money. It's temporary, it fluctuates. It's here one day and gone the next, and you can't take it when you go. So what God did with me over the past five to seven years, <laughs> he taught me through a very, very painful process how to trust him as my provider. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, your provider. And men, I need you to hear this. You are not the provider of your family, God is. Yes, he's put you in a position to take care of them, but it's only because of his providence first that you're able to provide for them. When you are struggling to provide for your family or even for yourself, single guys, you need to go to him. Could it be that he's testing you to see where your or trust lies. Y'all, he's always got a better plan. And I'm sharing this because he's put finances so heavy on my heart. I don't even know who this is speaking to, but it's gotta be someone because I really never talk about money and God put this heavy on my heart. Now, Holy Spirit's doing something. But even though that process was really painful for me, Maybe it's not for you, but things that we tie our hearts to that tightly tends to be painfully unwound. Even though that process was painful, I am so grateful. And I can't tell you how many times in the last eight months of this purposefully homeless journey without having a job where my faith has been tested to see if I'm gonna stand confidently in who God has proven himself to be in my life over and 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 over again. And I can confidently say that at my lowest points, it's been a process of 
my confidence becoming stronger and my faith becoming stronger and my switch from anxiety to faith has become quicker to where I can now have very, very little in my bank account and have a bill due the next day and I can confidently say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you are my faithful provider, that you know exactly how much money is in my account. You know exactly how you're gonna provide. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunities that are coming. Thank you, Lord, for the miraculous provision that's coming. Thank you, Lord, that I have nothing to fear. Thank you, Lord, for taking my anxiety and giving me peace instead. Y'all, I'm not perfect at this, but it has gotten so much easier and I can confidently tell you that it's been this process over years and years and years that has only changed my heart and my perspective and has never changed who God is. So let me encourage you and urge you to learn from my process and step into trusting God who is faithful yesterday, today, and tomorrow. A week ago, I had a dollar and 53 cents in my bank account and I had a bill due the next day and God came through in miraculous ways. And since then, I have hit a major financial breakthrough and I'm not saying this in any sort of prosperity gospel, manipulative prayer kind of way. God is God. He rewards obedience in his timing and his timing is best because he knows what the process is doing for your character and how it's preparing you for what's to come. But God came through in a major way financially for me over the weekend so that that $1.53 is laughable because of the exponential change. And I am by no means really well off. I'm just way better off than I was a week ago. And the cool thing is about this process is that I've gotten to receive the generosity of so many people that when I got this breakthrough, the first thing I did, the first thing I wanted to do was give. And that's what I did. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that to share with you that the way God provides provokes generosity. <laughs> it makes you want to be generous. And the cooler thing about that is that God doesn't let us outgive him. So it's this constant cycle of generosity, begetting generosity, begetting generosity, begetting generosity forever. The more generous you are, the more generous God is with you. It's just a kingdom principle. So I hope that encouraged some of you. I hope and I pray that some of you hearing this will be able to bypass a whole lot of pain and a whole lot of the process that I had to go through and just simply choose today to trust God and that he knows better. But to wrap this up, I wanna share with you why I'm purposefully homeless. And it has so much to do with the first verses that I shared with you because it's about relationship with God. Relationship with God that was bought at a price. The price was Jesus' death, but it doesn't end there. We need to stop stopping at the cross because it didn't end there. Yes, we need to remember the cross, but in remembering the cross, remember why he went to the cross. It was to defeat death. It was to defeat and destroy sin and the effects of sin. It was to give you his eternal life. He, Jesus, was the substitution for you. He died the death that we deserve to give us the life that we don't deserve. And I'm not just talking about eternity, I'm talking about now. Colossians 3, verse three says, for you died. And then later on in the chapter, it says, so put to death all the things of the sensual world, the sensual nature, the natural nature. <laughs> There's a reality that is greater, that he died and rose from the dead to give you. So the reason why I'm on this purposefully homeless journey is because Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> you guys, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not actually sorry, but it's just been getting me. It's just been getting me. Because Jesus rose from the dead, I have no fear of death. I have an identity that is hidden with Christ in God. So when God looks at me, he sees the perfection of his son, Christ Jesus. He adopts me into his family because of Jesus rising from the dead. Jesus didn't just die, he rose again. So there is resurrection from the dead and we need to live in that reality because it changes everything. And that didn't just set us free from sin and death, but it gave us access to God through the Holy Spirit and we can have relationship with God and experience the presence and peace and overwhelming joy of God in relationship with him by learning who he is 
and spending time with him in his word, in prayer, in listening prayer, but it's about spending quality time with the most real thing ever. It has nothing to do with your senses, although he will rock you and your senses. <laughs> But y'all, I'm on this journey because I have a relationship with the God of the universe and he chose to use me because I have a relationship with him. That's it, I'm not special. I just want relationship with him. Something that's totally available to you too for free 90 free. But because I said yes, because I had relationship with him and I said yes to this journey, to this adventure, to not knowing and stepping out in faith and trusting him one day at a time. Eight months later, I have testimony on testimony of his faithfulness, his goodness, and the reality of Jesus Christ crucified and risen. It's real. He's real. Jesus is real. He's so real. You guys, he's so real. And he died because he loves you. He died for relationship with you. He's not mad. <laughs> He's excited. And no, most of you won't have to be homeless to learn this too. But I can promise you, even though it's been incredibly hard sometimes, it's been the most rewarding thing. So why am I purposely homeless? Because I said yes. Because I obeyed in love. Because I have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because I have confidence that Jesus rose from the dead and my life is hidden in him and he has good plans. Because he's preparing me for something that he knows and I don't and I trust him in that process. And while I'm listing these things, you guys, take them to heart, make them personal. Whatever you're going through, God is doing these things in your life too. He's building character, he's positioning you. He's increasing your capacity to love him and know him and love other people. It's also for understanding and revelation of my identity in him. And the suffering that I've gone through in this process has only revealed to me how invincible I am in him and how nothing can shake me because I am secure in him forever. Nothing can take me out of his hands. It's for ministry, for mission and outreach. I cannot tell you how many people I have been privileged to encourage, to pray for, to share Jesus with, to pray for healing for. Like the list goes on and on and on. I've gotten to serve. I've gotten to be Jesus to people. And it's literally all him working through me. I can't take any credit for that. It's simply a daily yes. It's for intercession. Very early on, God told me that he wanted me to pray for everyone he leads me to. But because I'm confident in my relationship with him, I can lift these people up as I meet them and be confident that he hears, that he does something about it, that he moves. Y'all, we don't have to pray 24 seven for heaven to listen. That's not faith. Faith is believing that he heard you the first time. And if he wants you to pray for them again or the thing again, he will put them on your heart. If it's something you're worried about, stop praying for it because you're worried. Give God your worry. <laughs> This is about faith, you guys. And lastly, most importantly, is that God is highlighting the greater need, the spiritual deficit of his people. I don't know who saw the video I posted on June 2nd, but God gave me a word while I was doing cardio. And essentially the word was that God is homeless in Hollywood. He keeps bringing me back to LA because God, just like me, is homeless in Hollywood. And he's not talking about the lost because that's pretty obvious. He's talking about believers both in Hollywood and the nation and the world, neglecting the cultivation of a relationship with him. We need to cultivate a home in our hearts for him. We need to prepare a place for him. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'm gonna link it in the description box below. But y'all, that is the most important reason. It's to be a living prophetic illustration of his call on your life to draw near to him. You draw near to him with repentance. And as I've mentioned in past videos, repentance is not a scary word, but you have to live in obedience to him. At some point in your life, in the context of a loving relationship where the other person asked you to do something and you did it willingly because you love them, that's what obedience to God looks like. He's not saying, obey me because I'm God, although he could because he's God, but that's not how he's saying it. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. He's saying that when we're in a loving relationship, relationship. It ain't no thing to do what your lover wants you to do. And if we trust him that he's for us and not against us because he led by example, by dying to demonstrate his love for us, it should be no problem at all to obey him. So y'all, I know there was a lot. Let me just pray for you real quick. 
Yeah, Jesus, I thank you for everyone watching this video. I thank you, Lord, that their hearts have heard your truth. I thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit is already working in their hearts and their lives. I thank you, Lord, that you are love, you are freedom, and you bring joy. God, I thank you that you're for us, you're not against us, and that repentance and obedience only draw us closer to you, and you are love. So Jesus, I just ask that you would reveal yourself to every single person this week. Lord, that you would deepen their understanding, give them revelation, give them a desire for your word, give them a desire to know you, give them a desire to surrender their lives and become a part of your body and receive everything that you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much to my Patreon family. Because of you, we were able to sponsor a Love Does Child in Need this month. I'm so excited about that. If you want to support this ministry or become a part of my Patreon family, there are links in the description box below, and I will see you next time. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, tell me one place in the world that's on your bucket list to visit.